I'll always be Brian. Rarely am I Paul, you know, especially with kids. Every time we go back, the question really with me is, is the audience still there? Paul Walker, renowned for his role in the Fast and Amp Furious franchise, was a beloved actor whose tragic demise on November 30th, 2013, shocked fans worldwide. His final hours, marked by charity work and family moments, encapsulated his life's passions and humanitarian spirit, leaving a profound impact. Paul Walker's early life and career, Paul Walker's journey into the limelight began far from the high-speed chases and dramatic scenes of the Fast and Amp Furious franchise. Born on September 12, 1973 in Glendale, California, Walker grew up in a loving, working-class family. He was the second of five children in a close-knit household. His mother, Cheryl, was a fashion model and his father, Paul William Walker III, a sewer contractor and a two-time Golden Gloves champion. This blend of grit and grace in his upbringing played a significant role in shaping Walker's character and career. Raised in the San Fernando Valley area of Los Angeles, Walker's early life was steeped in the typical Southern California culture, a mix of sunny beaches, bustling city life, and the nascent influence of Hollywood. The Walker family, adherents of the Mormon faith, fostered a conservative environment at home. This religious background instilled in Paul a sense of discipline and moral values that he carried throughout his life. Walker's foray into acting was somewhat serendipitous, spurred by his mother's modeling background. At the tender age of two, he began his modeling career, appearing in a television commercial for Pampers. It was a modest start, but it opened the door to the entertainment industry. As he grew, so did his roles. By the age of six, he was already appearing in TV shows, including small roles in popular series like Highway to Heaven and Touched by an Angel. These early experiences in front of the camera laid the groundwork for his future in acting. During his teenage years, Walker's natural charm and good looks made him a perfect fit for the screen. At 13, he made his movie debut in the horror comedy Monster in the Closet. This role marked a significant milestone in Walker's career, showcasing his potential as a young actor. However, despite his early successes, he remained grounded, balancing his burgeoning acting career with a normal teenage life. He attended Village Christian School in Sun Valley, California, where he excelled in sports, particularly basketball and soccer. After graduating from high school in 1991, Walker's passion for marine biology led him to enroll in community college. He was a fan of marine biologist Jacques Cousteau and aspired to blend his love for the ocean with his academic pursuits. However, the pull of acting proved too strong. His natural talent and striking looks caught the attention of casting directors, leading to more significant roles in both television and film. Walker's early film roles were diverse, ranging from the family comedy Meet the Deedles to supporting parts in teen films like Varsity Blues and She's All That. These roles, while not critically acclaimed, were instrumental in sharpening his acting skills and increasing his visibility in Hollywood. It was during this period that Walker's all-American boy-next-door charm became evident, making him a favorite among teenage audiences. The turning point in Walker's career came with the movie The Skulls in 2000. This thriller, centered around the secret societies of an Ivy League college, gave Walker a platform to showcase his ability to carry more intense, dramatic roles. His performance in The Skulls caught the eye of director Rob Cohen, who would later cast him in a role that would define his career. In 2001, Walker's career took a dramatic turn with his casting as Brian O'Connor in The Fast and the Furious. This high-octane action film, focused on the world of illegal street racing and heists, was a box office hit and catapulted Walker to international fame. His portrayal of an undercover cop with a moral dilemma resonated with audiences, and his on-screen chemistry with co-star Vin Diesel was a key factor in the film's success. The movie spawned a franchise that became synonymous with Walker's career. As Walker's star rose in Hollywood, he remained dedicated to his craft and continued to explore diverse roles. His filmography during this period reflects a willingness to step outside the mold of action hero, as seen in his performances in films like Joyride and Into the Blue.
rise to fame with Fast and Amp Furious. The year 2001 marked a pivotal moment in Paul Walker's career with the release of The Fast and the Furious. This film, directed by Rob Cohen, was not just another action movie. It was a cultural phenomenon that redefined the genre and established Walker as a Hollywood icon. His portrayal of Brian O'Connor, an undercover cop infiltrating the underground world of street racing, resonated with audiences worldwide, catapulting him to a level of fame he had never experienced before. The Fast and the Furious was a blend of high-speed car chases, intricate heists, and a portrayal of the familial bonds formed in the underground racing scene. Walker's character, Brian O'Connor, was central to this narrative, a role that showcased his ability to blend charm and intensity. His chemistry with co-star Vin Diesel, who played Dominic Toretto, was a key element of the film's success. The dynamic between Brian and Dom, which evolved from rivalry to deep brotherhood, became one of the most beloved aspects of the franchise. Walker's performance in the first film was both charismatic and nuanced, capturing the internal conflict of his character torn between his duty as a law enforcement officer and his loyalty to the new family he found in the racing community. This complexity added depth to the action-packed film and made Brian O'Connor a beloved character among fans. The movie's success was not just in its box office earnings, but in how it tapped into the car culture of the early 2000s, making it a cultural touchstone. The success of The Fast and the Furious led to a series of sequels, with Walker reprising his role in most of them. Each installment expanded the universe of the franchise, introducing new characters and increasingly elaborate plot lines. Walker's character evolved as well, from an undercover cop to a fugitive, and finally, a central figure in a global network of racers and operatives. This evolution allowed Walker to showcase a range of acting skills, from the intense action sequences to the more emotional moments of the saga. The franchise's appeal was its blend of high-speed action, exotic locations, and a recurring theme of family and loyalty. Walker's role as the moral center of the group was crucial. He brought a sense of humanity and relatability to the high-octane world of street racing and espionage. The films were not just about cars and stunts, they were about the people behind the wheel, and Walker's Brian O'Connor epitomized this. Off-screen, the cast of the Fast and Amp Furious franchise formed a close bond, mirroring the on-screen family they portrayed. This camaraderie was evident in their interactions during promotions and interviews, adding to the appeal of the films. Walker, with his easygoing and warm personality, was a beloved member of this family. His relationships with co-stars, especially Vin Diesel, went beyond the sets of the movies. They shared a brotherly bond that was heartfelt and genuine. The success of the Fast and Amp Furious franchise transformed Walker's career. It made him an international star, a status that brought new opportunities and challenges. Despite the global fame, Walker remained grounded. He continued to pursue roles that interested him and took on projects that allowed him to explore different aspects of his acting ability. The franchise's impact extended beyond the film industry. It influenced car culture, fashion, and even video games. Walker, as the face of the franchise, became an icon in these communities. His portrayal of Brian O'Connor, a character who respected and loved the culture of street racing, made him a respected figure in the car enthusiast community. Philanthropic efforts and personal life. Beyond the camera's glare and the adrenaline-fueled world of fast and amp furious, Paul Walker led a life marked by compassion, generosity, and a deep commitment to making a difference. His philanthropic efforts were as integral to his identity as his acting career, painting the picture of a man who leveraged his fame for the greater good. Walker's humanitarian spirit was not a product of his success, rather it was ingrained in him from a young age. Growing up in a family that valued community service, he was exposed to the importance of giving back early on. This foundation laid the groundwork for his future endeavors in philanthropy. One of Walker's most notable charitable contributions was the establishment of Reach Out Worldwide, ROWW, in 2010. The inception of this nonprofit organization was a direct response to the massive earthquake in Haiti that year. Deeply moved by the devastation and the struggles of the Haitian people, 
Walker flew to the country to offer hands-on assistance. However, he quickly realized that his efforts, while well-intentioned, needed to be more structured to make a significant impact. Thus, Rao was born, an organization dedicated to providing quick and efficient relief to those affected by natural disasters. Under Walker's guidance, Roe W. assembled a network of professionals with first responder skill sets, including doctors, nurses, firefighters, and construction workers, who could mobilize quickly and provide essential aid. Walker's passion for the ocean and marine life also played a significant role in his personal and philanthropic life. A dedicated marine enthusiast, he studied marine biology and was a fan of marine biologist Jacques Cousteau. This passion led him to participate in the National Geographic series. Expedition Great White, where he helped tag great white sharks off the coast of Mexico. His love for the ocean extended to advocacy for marine conservation, highlighting his deep respect for nature and his commitment to preserving it. Away from the spotlight, Walker was a devoted father. His daughter, Meadow Rain Walker, was the center of his world. Born on November 4, 1998, Meadows' presence in his life brought out a softer, more grounded side of the actor. Despite his busy schedule and the demands of his career, Walker was deeply involved in Meadows' life. He cherished their time together and often spoke about the joy and perspective fatherhood brought him. His love for Meadow was evident in his efforts to provide her with a normal, stable upbringing away from the Hollywood limelight. Walker's personal life was also characterized by his love for cars, a self-professed gearhead, he had an extensive collection of vehicles, ranging from high-performance sports cars to classic models. This passion for cars was not just a hobby, it was a reflection of his personality, adventurous, spirited, and always in search of the next thrill. His personal car collection was a testament to his knowledge and appreciation for automotive engineering and design. Despite his fame and success, Walker maintained a down-to-earth personality that endeared him to friends, family, and fans alike. He was known for his kindness, humility, and a sense of humor that made him relatable despite his celebrity status. These traits, combined with his philanthropic endeavors, painted the picture of a man who remained true to his roots and used his platform to effect positive change in the world. The Final Day Events Leading Up to the Tragedy November 30th, 2013 began like any other day for Paul Walker, but it was destined to be etched in history as the day the world lost a beloved actor and humanitarian. The day's events reflected the two things closest to Walker's heart, his family and his commitment to helping others. The morning was a time of familial bonding for Walker. He spent it in conversation with his daughter Meadow, discussing plans for the upcoming Christmas season. This seemingly mundane activity was a testament to the strong bond between father and daughter. Their discussion about choosing a Christmas tree for their home was a heartwarming example of Walker's dedication to being an involved and loving parent. For Walker, these moments of normalcy and family time were precious, a grounding force amidst his hectic professional life. Later that day, Walker's focus shifted to his philanthropic work. He was scheduled to attend a charity event organized by his foundation, Reach Out Worldwide. The event was held to raise funds for the victims of Typhoon Haiyan, which had recently devastated parts of Southeast Asia. Walker was deeply committed to Rodiu, and events like these were not just obligatory appearances for him. They were personal missions. He believed strongly in using his fame and resources to help those in need, and this event was a direct reflection of that belief. As the afternoon progressed, Walker prepared to leave for the charity event. The atmosphere was one of urgency. He was keen on not being late, knowing the importance of the occasion. The event was not just a fundraiser. It was an opportunity to bring together like-minded individuals dedicated to providing aid and support to disaster-stricken communities. Walker's involvement in Row W was not limited to being a figurehead. He was actively involved in the planning and execution of such events, working tirelessly behind the scenes to ensure their success. At the event, Walker was in his element, surrounded by friends, fans, and fellow philanthropists. He was known for his ability to connect with people from all walks of life, and this event was no different. 
His charisma and genuine passion for the cause shone through as he engaged with attendees, sharing stories, and expressing his gratitude for their support. The event was a success, raising significant funds and awareness for the victims of the typhoon. For Walker, the satisfaction came not just from the funds raised, but from the collective effort and spirit of community that the event fostered. As the event drew to a close, Walker decided to leave with his friend and business partner, Roger Rodas. Rodas, a fellow car enthusiast and professional race car driver, shared Walker's passion for cars. They decided to take a drive in Rodas's Porsche Carrera GT, a decision that would tragically be their last. The two men, bonded by their shared interests, set off, unaware of the fate that awaited them. The drive began as a moment of leisure and camaraderie. The streets of Santa Clarita, California were quiet, with the afternoon sun casting a soft glow over the city. For Walker and Rodas, the drive was an opportunity to unwind after the event, a brief respite before returning to their respective responsibilities. The Porsche Carrera GT, a marvel of automotive engineering, was the perfect vehicle for such an occasion, a symbol of the freedom and thrill that both men cherished. However, the day took a tragic turn as the car crashed into a tree and burst into flames. The accident was sudden and catastrophic, leaving no chance for survival. The impact and subsequent fire claimed the lives of both Walker and Rodas, a devastating end to what had started as a day filled with hope and purpose. The Accident, Circumstances, and Immediate Aftermath The 30th of November 2013 was a day of profound tragedy, marked by the unexpected and devastating accident that claimed the lives of Paul Walker and his friend Roger Rodas. The incident, which occurred in the city of Santa Clarita, California, was not just a shock due to the loss of a beloved actor, but also for the stark reminder of life's unpredictability. Paul Walker and Roger Rodas left the charity event in a Porsche Carrera GT, a car renowned for its performance and power. Rodas, an experienced race car driver, was behind the wheel with Walker in the passenger seat. They planned a brief drive, a routine act that unexpectedly turned into a calamity. The route they took was familiar, a stretch of road in an office park known for its smooth surface and clear visibility. The accident occurred on Hercules Street, a wide road in a business park that was usually quiet on weekends. The Porsche was traveling at a high speed, far exceeding the posted limit. As Rodas navigated a curve, he lost control of the vehicle. The car veered off the road, first hitting a light pole and then colliding with a tree. The impact was immense, causing the car to spin and hit another tree, ultimately bursting into flames. The force of the collision was such that the Porsche broke into several pieces and the wreckage was scattered over a wide area. The car was almost unrecognizable, reduced to twisted metal and charred remains. Witnesses reported hearing a loud boom, followed by billowing smoke. The speed and intensity of the crash made it immediately apparent that it was a severe incident. The first responders arrived at the scene within minutes of the accident. However, the severity of the crash and the resulting fire made immediate rescue efforts impossible. The fire department worked swiftly to extinguish the flames, but the intensity of the fire and the damage to the vehicle left little hope for the occupants. Both Walker and Rodas were pronounced dead at the scene. The news of their deaths was met with disbelief and grief, not just by those at the scene but soon after, by the world at large. The immediate aftermath of the accident was chaotic. The area was cordoned off as investigators began to piece together the sequence of events that led to the crash. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department launched a thorough investigation, seeking to understand the cause of the accident. There was initial speculation about the involvement of another vehicle, but this was quickly ruled out. The focus turned to the speed of the car and the conditions of the road, Autopsy reports later revealed that Rodas died of multiple traumatic injuries, while Walker died from the combined effects of traumatic and thermal injuries. The fact that Walker was still alive upon impact made the tragedy even more harrowing. The coroner's report also indicated that neither drugs nor alcohol were factors in the accident. The crash raised questions about the safety of the Porsche Carrera GT. The car, known for its racing capabilities, was notoriously difficult to handle, 
even for experienced drivers. Its design centered on. Speed and performance came under scrutiny. However, the investigation concluded that the primary factors in the crash were unsafe speed and the age of the car's tires, which were nine years old and not suited for high-speed driving. In the days following the accident, the site became a makeshift memorial for fans of Walker. People from all over the world came to pay their respects, leaving flowers, candles, and messages. The outpouring of grief was a testament to Walker's impact both as an actor and as a human being. His death was not just the loss of a public figure, but of a man admired for his kindness, generosity, and passion for life. Investigation and Controversies The sudden and tragic death of Paul Walker and Roger Rodas in a car crash on November 30, 2013, sparked a complex investigation, surrounded by a swirl of controversies and conspiracy theories. The high-profile nature of Walker's death, combined with the shocking circumstances of the crash, fueled widespread public interest and speculation. Immediately following the accident, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, along with the California Highway Patrol, launched a detailed investigation to determine the cause of the crash. Central to the inquiry were the speed of the vehicle, the condition of the car, and the road conditions at the time of the accident. Investigators meticulously analyzed the crash site, gathered witness statements, and examined the wreckage of the Porsche Carrera GT. The official investigation concluded that the primary cause of the crash was excessive speed. The Porsche, driven by Rodas, was traveling at speeds between 80 and 93 miles per hour in a 45 miles per hour zone. This high rate of speed was unsuitable for the road conditions and was the critical factor in Rodas losing control of the vehicle. The investigation also found that the age of the car's tires contributed significantly to the accident. The tires were nine years old, which compromised their integrity and performance, particularly at high speeds. Another aspect of the investigation focused on the design and mechanics of the Porsche Carrera GT. The car was known for its power and was essentially a race car legal for street use. Its design prioritized speed and performance, which required a high degree of skill and experience to handle safely. The investigation, however, found no mechanical issues with the car that could have contributed to the crash, effectively ruling out a vehicle malfunction as a cause. The conclusions of the official investigation did not stop the emergence of various controversies and conspiracy theories. In the immediate aftermath of the accident, rumors circulated about the possibility of a street race involving another vehicle, but this was quickly dispelled by law enforcement officials. One of the more persistent theories was that Walker faked his death. This theory was fueled by inconsistencies and perceived anomalies in the crash and aftermath, including the condition of the bodies and the behavior of those involved in the accident's immediate response. These conspiracy theories gained traction on social media, where fans and skeptics alike speculated about the circumstances surrounding Walker's death. However, these theories lacked credible evidence and were largely dismissed by authorities and rational observers. The accident also led to legal battles. In September 2015, Meadow Walker, Paul's daughter, filed a wrongful death lawsuit against Porsche. The lawsuit claimed that the Porsche Carrera GT had numerous design flaws, including a lack of proper stability control and safety features that could have prevented the accident or at least allowed Walker to survive. The suit also alleged that the seatbelt design trapped Walker in the car, contributing to his death. Porsche, in response, stated that the car had been altered and improperly maintained, and that Walker was aware of the risks involved in driving or riding in the Carrera GT. The lawsuit was settled in 2017 for an undisclosed amount. The controversies surrounding the crash and the ensuing legal battles raised questions about celebrity, the responsibilities of car manufacturers, and the public's fascination with conspiracy theories. The intense media scrutiny and public interest in the case reflected the larger-than-life persona Walker had as a Hollywood star, and the impact of his untimely death on his fans and the public.